welcome back to our frozen hell today. So we're waiting on materials now. Or I've got to pick some stuff up to make the refractory for the uh, for the forge here. So that's the uh, that's the next step in the forge to get done, so we can get that thing fired up and all that good stuff. We still have some work to do on the burner, but uh, I thought now would be a good time to maybe show you guys the anvil I started two or three years ago, and I've used it the way it is, but it's time to finish it off and make it nice and do it the way it should be. So what I did, I had a four foot long piece of railroad track. I cut it in half, welded them together, and now I have a nice long anvil out of railroad track. The thing with railroad track, it's very hard steel. It's very hard to weld. You got to preheat it well, all that good stuff. I don't know how well this is going to come across because the wind is getting nasty out here. As always, we're always fighting the wind here, but that's okay. So anyway, what we're going to do today, we're going to work on shaping this anvil. We have some welding to do on it to make the top nice and flat, a whole lot of grinding. Probably three quarters of the video is going to be grinding. So hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned. I'll catch you on the other side of it. Okay, I'll give you guys a rundown of what we have so far on this thing, what I started a few years ago. So this is actually two pieces of track right here. I wanted a nice wide top on it. And as you can tell, I, uh, it hasn't had much tender love since I've started it, but we have to finish shaping the horn. That's real important if we're going to be doing uh, chisel sockets and things like that. So this stuff has to go right here. And that's where the hardy hole is. I cut it out with a grinder before I put these together nice and square. Now to weld around that, I took a piece of copper, copper pipe, cut it down the middle, flattened it out, and made a rough square, pounded it down in there. I'll have some cleanup to do with a file and a burr, but it's not too bad. That copper keeps that weld from getting down in there. So I want one side of this to be nice and squared off, nice square edge. The other side I want curved over. Um, give you guys an idea how hard the steel is. You hear that ring? See that bounce? So it's got a good bounce to it. It's good hard stuff. Now that ring, that ring could drive your ears nuts while you're doing it all day. So good thing some people do is they take magnets and attach them to the side. It helps deaden that ring. I like the sound of the ring, but it's not good for your ears after a while. So we're going to get to work on this thing. We're going to get the grinder and just start uh, start cleaning this edge up here or this top. This is pretty well. This was pretty well cleaned up at one time. I do have a few pits I want to fill in with welding rod. So that's what we're going to work on. We're going to get at it now. Stay tuned. point where we got to heat this thing up because we're going to start welding these pits and stuff like that. Now I've done three passes on top of this. I, I did the first pass. Oh, I did the first pass was this way. Second pass was this way because this had a big crown on it and I've been told by some people who are more familiar with making these than I am that I should have left the crown on it, but I wanted a I wanted a good size surface area to work with. So I had welded that in, but I'm going to run with it. Like I said, you guys saw the uh, you saw the hammer bounce off of it. The 70 I, I used 7018 AC for a lot of stuff. I was going to fill it out or fill it in with 7018, and I have some hard surfacing rod, 
the use for uh, plow blades, stuff like that, but I decided maybe I'd be better served sticking with the 7018 because it really does seem to work hard and pretty well. Now, I'm going to be beating red hot metal on this thing, so it should be a lot softer than this to begin with. Over time, I know I'm probably going to have to do some adjusting and some grinding and things like that. I am on the hunt for a... Uh, I'm on the hunt for a regular anvil, but it's it's going to take a while. The the prices of them, since shows like Forged in Fire and Alex Steele's YouTube channel, stuff like that, the prices of these things have just gone out of this friggin' world. For Even for railroad track, it's hard to get right now. And that's just the way it is. So we're going to get a fire going under this thing. Start getting this preheated to uh, weld it. This being, uh, <clears throat> as hard as this steel is to get it to take a weld, you really have to heat it well. A few hundred degrees, 400, somewhere in there, whatever you can do to get it. But let's get this guy going. So much easier with the B tank. Now we don't need a huge fire or anything like that. I just, like I said, just need to get it warming up. Plus it'll help keep our hands warm. It is a little chilly and windy out today. But I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to hit this side first. Yeah, you can tell I've uh, treated this thing real well. <laughs> Alright, we'll get this going. I'm going to shut the camera off for a bit. And we'll be back when this thing's heated up well. So we're ready to weld this. I've got this preheated now. Before I do the top, I'll have to clean the uh, soot up. But I want to hit this edge first right here because this is the edge I'm going to want to square up. I don't want this one rounded. And I've got some spots I want to fill in here and there. It's going to be a lot of grinding and a lot of fill welding. Um, I'm not sure if this is really the proper way to go about building an anvil. I'm just kind of winging it here. So we'll run our bead here and probably do a double bead. And then we got to do a bead there so we have enough material to grind off. Thing is, if I didn't preheat this, I wouldn't get enough penetration on this most likely. I'm not saying, I'm not sure to be quite honest with you. I may not get enough penetration on there when I go to use the edge of that anvil to make tongs or stuff like that whatever you need a right angle for good chance i could chip that edge off just from working it so we're gonna get welding it i'll throw you in the time lapse and i'll see you on the other side of it Trouble. They will 
Well, it looks like a silver turd right now. But you can see with every layer we put on, we're getting less and less of these. So I've got a few more of those, well, quite a few more of them, but they're getting smaller every time. So we're going to do that until I have a nice, smooth, flat surface on there. And we're going to go from there. Well, I haven't done anything inside this building with you guys in a long-ass time. There's a good reason for it. It's just a pit of disgusting despair. I'm not even going to move the camera around because I really... Uh, Almost embarrassed to show this mess. But anyway, you can see what we're into. We're uh, working on that anvil. I started that a few years ago. Like I said, I've, I've used it some just the way it is. It's worked alright, but as I get into making better things, I want a nice, good, flat, clean surface. I think what I may do is get some metal belts for my uh, belt sander. I've got a cheap sacrificial harbor mistake belt sander because I have to order a bunch of parts for my nice big porter cable belt sander all the guide parts and everything are just destroyed it it's, it's had its use it doesn't owe me anything but that cheap harbor uh, harbor freight one was a good replacement just to get me through for 25 30 bucks so I can't really complain about it but I think what I'm gonna do is pick up some uh, good metal blades for that thing or uh, metal blades excuse me some some metal belts for it and work on getting that whole surface uniform. I may even do that before I do any more welding because I've got to take it down quite a bit anyway to get rid of any dips and valleys and anything like that. So I think a belt sander may be a nice way of doing it. Um, unfortunately I don't own a bridge port or anything like that. Someday I would like to have a, a mill in the barn but that's a ways down the road. So. We're going to keep going on it until we're at a point where we can get back to the barn project. When we can get back to the barn project, we will stop these for a little bit because uh, I really want to get that closed in. In another week or so, I should be able to go pick up another truckload of siding boards. So that'll be nice because that'll go a long way towards finishing buttoning that up. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching. To all the new subscribers out there, thank you for signing up. I hope you... Uh, I hope you folks find some good information here. Um, in these last few videos working out by the shop and all that are more reminiscent of my early videos. The uh, I feel the other ones, the in-between ones, between then and now are much better. But uh, So anyway, you folks have a good evening. I will catch you on the next one.